Hi everybody, today we're gonna to be cracking the code on grief. Yes, you did hear me correctly because there are three main energies or um, base things that impact the way that you experience grief and for how long you experience your grief. So if you're grieving or if you have been grief um, stricken, tune in, listen to the show and you're gonna find out some ways that you can actually help relieve your own energy and symptoms of grief so that you can truly live a very, very happy and fulfilled life. Okay, so before we get started, if you don't know me yet, I'm Diana Palm and I am the medium that helps you heal the energy of grief from heartbreak and loss. So we're gonna crack this wide open. We're gonna talk about the three um, energies, things that you can do to help break down, break apart, and heal, and transform, and lift your grief. The first one that impacts how long you suffer in grief is the energy of grief. As you know, if you've been grief-stricken, if you miss a, lo a loved one that passed, you may feel very, very heavy. The energy of grief is dense, and it makes you feel disconnected, lonely, abandoned, sometimes hopeless. Many people move into a depression or despondency, but it is an actual feeling. If you close your eyes and you feel the energy of grief, it is something that, it, that feels very suffocating energetically. And many people take great pride in their grief, you know, because they think that it makes them validate the love that they have for the loved one that passed. They feel that Maybe if I grieve for a very, very long time, it'll prove my love. Or if I'm really impacted by grief, that will validate how much I loved my loved one in the past. And that's just not the case. Grief is the energy of that disconnection. It is not knowing that your loved one is still with you. So it feels disconnected. It feels lonely. It feels very, very isolating. And it can also bring up a lot of feelings, being scared to move forward. Um, and that's what we'll talk about number two. The other thing that really impacts your grief and for how long you grief is your mindset. And I'm not telling you to change your mindset and just pretend like things aren't there. Of course not. You do have to heal through the process of grief. This is your opportunity to heal. So your mindset is usually having to do with not knowing what to do after your loved one passes not knowing what life changes to make, um, or thinking that you don't even know how to live without your loved one. That's a mindset, that's a belief system. Um, many people get stuck in the past, and that has to do with your mindset as well, just replaying events from the past, thinking about events from the past, and kind of getting stuck in the timeline rather than continuing to live in the present moment and anticipating, planning for, and manifesting and creating the life that's coming for you, the life in your future. So many people do get stuck in the past and that keeps them stuck in grief. Um, when I'm working with people on their beliefs around death and the afterlife, this is where we change the structure and the way that they believe and interpret life and death because a very quick mindset is when you really know that your loved one's still with you. They haven't gone anywhere. So you don't have to go deep into your past to retrieve and pull forward memories of a time and place that you shared together. Many people do that and it's you know a long time ago and they're trying to connect with the energy of someone that they missed from 20 years ago. But that timeline isn't there. You're not that person anymore and your loved one's not there either. The truth is your loved one is with you right here and right now and always has been. They haven't gone anywhere. They simply left the physical plane to open up and prepare you for your next step in life. So the more that you cling to the past and try to reenact the past, the less you're able to actually move forward and really get to your next level, which is what the grief process teaches us and what the letting go process teaches us. So it's not about letting go of your loved one, it's about truly understanding that they're still with you and not looking for them anywhere else than knowing that they are right here and not just in your heart, but truly, spiritually, energetically still with you. And that's why I love to teach people about the afterlife. 
Now, the third thing that can really keep you stuck in grief is your genetic code. And this is where it comes to your ancestral beliefs and the way that your DNA is actually programmed to experience grief. I love to do this with my clients and it's one of the first things that I do in my number one spiritual grief healing program called Reconnect. I like to muscle test people to see how they're genetically programmed to experience grief. Many people have been predisposed, so to speak, to grieve forever. And this has to do with your mindset and the energy, but also it's deeply embedded in your DNA. It is truly the way that you're programmed to experience grief. And yes, I do know how to help you heal your genetic programs to change it to something that is more beneficial for you here and now in this lifetime so that you can release your ancestral uh, predisposition on how you experience grief. And simplified, the, the easiest way to explain this is what I do, muscle testing. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now because I think you'll find this very interesting to do on your own where you can actually ask yourself these questions and get the answers, okay? So if you're with me and you're still tuned in, go ahead and stand up, please. Put your feet shoulder width apart. Just relax your arms to your sides and close your eyes. First, we'll start off by saying yes, yes, yes. And you should feel just a very subtle energy pulling you forward if you're properly hydrated. After you do that, say no, no, no. And you should feel a very slight pull backwards. If you're not moving at all, say it again. Just give it a couple of seconds. And if you're still not moving, go drink a big glass of water and wait about 15 minutes and try it again. As soon as you get your yes, yes, yes forward and your no, no, no backward, you're calibrated and ready to try this process. What I want you to do is stay in the same position, feet shoulder width apart, close your eyes, and simply state out loud, I grieve for one year. And you'll either get a yes or a no. After that, say, I grieve for five years. Yes or no, I grieve for 10 years. Yes, no, I grieve for a lifetime. Yes or no. And this will actually help you determine how you specifically are programmed to experience deep, uh, grief. Now, those programs, they're not really authentic to you. These are things you inherited, again, this is from your cultural upbringing. These are from your ancestral beliefs and they're encoded in your DNA. So when you crack that code and you realize, oh my God, I, I've been grieving for 10 years and I haven't been living my life to the fullest. That's 10 years I didn't live my life to the fullest because I was stuck in grief. That, that energy, what it does is have you living a half-life. It's almost as if you died with your loved one and this impacts your health your well-being, your finances, your love life, it impacts everything. So one of the things I like to really teach people in Reconnect, my number one grief healing program, is how to shift all three of those. So what the most important things you need to know are this. You'll be able to heal your grief when you know that your loved one is still with you. Like not just thinking, not hoping, not, um, you know, not just thinking it's a, a good idea or a nice concept, but to know. And how do you know? You know your loved one is still with you by collecting proof of the afterlife and interpreting your afterlife signs and symbols. So knowing that your loved one is still with you through the process of the signs and symbols that you receive from the afterlife, that helps you to know that you have not been abandoned you have not been left, that your loved one is still with you, and that can start to immediately shift your energy, the energy of being abandoned, alone, hopeless, and all of those things. So that's the first step. You will shift your mindset from saying things like, I'll miss you forever, or um, 
I'll grieve forever. I'll miss you forever. I can't imagine ever not feeling this grief. You'll shift that to appreciation. Like, I am so glad to know that you're still with me. I was scared for a minute, but now that I know my afterlife signs and I know we're in connection, that we've been reconnected, we're connected the whole time, you can start to shift your beliefs around that. You don't have to stay in the heavy state of grief that that um, nullifies or, or, or numbs you out for the life that you're living. You can actually fill your heart with gratitude and appreciation and knowing your loved one is still with you and knowing that they're with you every day and they perceive everything you're going through. In fact, their passing away and leaving the physical plane has most likely created a, who, a whole new life plan for you. They're rearranging things on the other side, people to meet, places to go, and ways that you can experience your life. So that is the second shift, the mindset shift, going from thinking the things that are in the mass media to what you really know is that they're with you. So just feeling the gratitude, the knowing that your your person is with you. Like when I went to Europe, I was after my sister passed and I knew that her spirit had kind of arranged the funds for me to go there and actually put the idea in my head. It was just a very spontaneous thing when I decided to go there. And so I had the idea, I looked it up online. I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. I want to go to Arthur Finlay College. I want to go to London and, and all this stuff. And then immediately the finances came. And when I went, I knew her spirit was with me. I knew she had arranged the whole thing. And sure enough, she was. I mean, I knew it, I felt her, but many of the mediums that I was surrounded with saw her, perceived her, and received messages from her. And then when I had an aura photo taken, the silhouette of her body was standing right beside me. And they said, wow, do you know that a loved one came with you here? I'm like, of course I do. She arranged the whole trip, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. It's a knowing. It's a knowing that your loved one is still with you. And that dramatically shifts the way that you experience your grief and the timeline that you allow yourself to stay in the suffering of grief. Um, the third thing is to heal the energy. And that truly is an energy. And so what I mean by that is when you feel the energy and the vibration of happiness, joy, or love, you're high on the emotional scale. When you're in grief, you're also often in fear, anger, and denial, all those energies that resonate very low on the emotional scale. So as you heal the energy, the mindset, the belief system structure, and, and your coding, your genetic codes on how long you experience grief, you're actually able to release those lower vibrational energies that hold you down and escalate through the emotional scale until you get into that appreciation and love. And that's the ultimate journey through cracking the code to grief. It is not meant to keep you stuck. And it is not meant to keep you from falling in love again or from living the most beautiful full life. Um, and that's, that's why I love to work with people through the grief process because so many people misconceive grief and they really get stuck there. And I go on Instagram, I go on social media of all kinds, you know, and I kind of scan what the dialogue is about grief. And there's so much content about how they will be missing you forever and they'll never be complete again. And all of those things have been socially acceptable. People say them, and every time they say them to themselves, their cells react. Their cells hold on to more of the grief and don't fully release it. So that is why the mindset is so important in the shifting of the grief. So as we heal the energy of grief, which we normally will carry very much in the heart and lungs, you'll notice shallow breathing, a heaviness in your chest, this over time can impact your physical body and make you get very sick. So it's important to clear the energy as well as the mindset and changing your genetic code. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and had some really amazing takeaways from today's video. Please let me know down in the comments what you learned. And if you actually did the muscle test, it, please write that down in the comments as well. Let me know. How long have you been programmed to grieve? One year, five years, 
10 years or a lifetime. And remember, if you have a lifetime or 10 years or five, whatever it is, if you would like to change your genetic coding, all of this is part of Reconnect, my number one spiritual grief healing program. I always have the links for that down below this video. And of course, you can come visit me at www.dianapalm.com. If you want to work with me, make sure you hit the button by this video as well, either above or below for booking a call and seeing if we're a good fit to work together. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to reconnect with you next week. Bye-bye.